Hi, and welcome back to Heimler's History Economics Edition. Now, in previous videos, I've mentioned something called the financial system. The financial system is just a place where people and firms and other institutions go to buy and sell stocks and bonds and make loans. It's the place to go if you want a mortgage to buy a house. It's also the place to go if firms want a loan to build new factories. And it is oh so tasty, so let's get to it. So what is a financial market? A financial market is just the place where households invest their savings to buy financial assets. And before we get into all the different kinds of financial assets that exist in this financial market, it's good for us to know what is the financial market good for. First, the financial system reduces transaction costs. Suppose you wanted to build a new amusement park that catered exclusively to millennials. And you decide to build rides like the reverse gentrification scream in which all the rich people load up onto the cars and then are pushed out by the impoverished people. And then you have to finance all the coffee carts that only serve flat whites. And let's not forget you're gonna have to build that ride which is just basically an apartment that your parents pay for while you're focusing on your art career. So much fun. Now suppose this park is gonna cost you one billion dollars to build. And if you had to go around to a bunch of private investors and raise all that money it would take you forever and it would cost a ton. And by the time you raised all the money from the private investors it wouldn't even be worth it. But enter the financial system. If you go to the financial system then it's like a one-stop shop for loans and that drastically reduces the transaction costs that are associated with procuring such a large loan. Now the second thing that the financial system is good for is reducing risk. If a business owner decided that they wanted to invest in more machines for their factory then theoretically they could finance it themselves by taking all the equity out of their house and using all of their life savings. But the problem with that is that it is very risky. I mean if the venture fails then that business owner has lost their house and their life savings. The safer way is for this business owner to raise money by selling stocks in their company, which we'll get to in a minute, or taking out a loan. And if the business owner does that, now the risk is dispersed, or as economists have it, diversified. The third thing the financial system is good for is providing liquidity. We consider an asset liquid if it can be quickly converted into cash. So for example, your checking account is liquid because all you have to do is take your little card, go to an ATM, put it in there, put your pin in, and provided there's something in the account, it will give you cash back. So banks help us keep our assets liquid. Now stocks and bonds are another way to keep assets liquid, but to a lesser degree, and we're going to talk about those, as I said, in a minute. Okay, so that's what the financial system is good for. And I've been throwing around the term financial assets. Now, what is an asset? Now, a financial asset is just a guarantee that a buyer will receive some future income from a seller. So if you loan me $100, that makes you the buyer of future income from me, provided I pay back the loan. And if I don't pay you back, you can just introduce my kneecaps to your favorite ball peen hammer. So that's what a loan is, and that's an important kind of financial asset in our world. You see, when a loan is made, then two realities are created, an asset and a liability. So back to our previous example, if I borrow $100 from you, then that $100 loan becomes an asset to you, and that same $100 becomes a liability to me because now I owe it back. So a loan is a very important kind of financial asset, and there are three others I want to tell you about, stocks, bonds, and bank deposits. First, stocks. Owning stock is laying claim to partial ownership in a company. Now you can't buy stocks in every company that exists because a lot of companies stay private, which means that all the profits that they generate go to the people who own that company. But most large companies sell ownership in their company as stocks to the public. Now, from the perspective of a business, each share of their company that they sell is a liability because eventually they're going to have to pay out what that's worth to the person who owns that part of the company. But from the perspective of the shareholder, each share of stock that they own is an asset. And the reason why is when that company profits, they also share in the profits. Next, bonds. A bond is like a stock, but in the opposite direction. If you buy a bond in a company, or more likely from the government, then you're essentially lending that entity your money with the expectation that they will pay you back with interest after a given amount of time. And the final financial asset I want to talk about is loan-backed securities. Now these can be very confusing, but here's the basic idea. Suppose there's a bank with $10 million in its vaults, and then 10 people come to take out a mortgage loan for $1 million each. At this point, that bank is officially out of cash. So what they can do to get more cash is to sell all those mortgages to an investment bank or a pool of investors. And when the bank does that, they no longer own those mortgages, but now they have $10 million back in their vault and they can keep making loans. And now those 10 people who took out those million dollar loans no longer owe their money back to that first bank. They now owe it to the pool of investors or the investment bank. And that's the basic idea. And I won't get into all the minutia about why this is a profitable system, but rest assured, if they're doing it, it is profitable. Okay, so those are the different kinds of assets that exist in the financial system. Now let's go one 
one step further and talk about the institutions that turn funds into financial assets. These institutions are known as financial intermediaries. And I'm going to introduce you to four kinds of financial intermediaries. Mutual funds, pension funds, life insurance companies, and banks. A mutual fund is just a bunch of stocks put together that you can buy as a group. Now, if a person only invested in the stock of one company in particular, then there's a lot of risk associated with that. If that company fails, then you lose all the money that you invested. So one way to diversify that risk is to purchase ownership in a mutual fund. So a mutual fund is just a portfolio of stocks that are chosen because the businesses that they represent are pretty diverse, which means that the failure of one is usually evened out by the success of another. So suppose I had a whole bag of Starburst, but they were all one color and you decided to buy it from me. Now there's a lot of risk associated with that because what if, horror of horrors, that whole bag turned out to be lemon Starburst? Then you will have wasted your money because let's be honest, nobody likes the lemon Starburst, they are just there to be tolerated. Investing in a mutual fund is like buying the whole bag of Starburst but knowing that there are all kinds of different colors in there. I mean, yeah, there will be some lemon ones in there, but there's also going to be strawberry and cherry. Mm. Okay, another kind of financial intermediary is a pension fund. If someone has a pension, that means they're putting away money for retirement. And what a pension fund does is takes all the money that people are putting away and invests it in a portfolio of stocks, kind of like a mutual fund. And the goal is that when that person retires, they will have made money on that investment. Another kind of financial intermediary is life insurance companies. A life insurance company is basically a company where people put a certain amount in each month, and then if they die prematurely, their surviving relatives get all that money. And let's not forget banks. A bank is a financial intermediary whose basic purpose is to solve the problem of liquidity. In its most basic form, a bank first accepts funds from depositors, which are called bank deposits. And that just means when you put your money into the bank, you do it with the expectation that when you want it, you can get it back. But even so, banks actually only keep a very small percentage of the money that people put in it. Instead, banks take your deposits and then loan them out to other people. And they can do this because they count on the fact that not everybody who has made deposits into that bank is going to show up on Wednesday and demand all all their money at the same time. But what happens if they do? Well, that's the subject of another video, and so I'll end it here for now. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you'd like me to continue acting as your intermediary for all things economics and history, then subscribe and I will keep making more videos. And if this video did you any good whatsoever, then there's a like button down below that will tell me so. I mean, I'd click it. And finally, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will answer them forthwithly.